So welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out for my senior defense. My name is Emmanuel Camarena and I will be talking about my experience here at Doja Libby. And I'd like to start off with Mi Familia, which in Spanish is my family. And with the help of my family, they really pushed and encouraged me to in succeeding here at Doja. And I would like to say that I had three I have three older brothers that also helped and guided me to, to, to the outcome so I could be successful. So I can finish strong in my years of high school. Next is mis compañeros, which is my friends. And I would like to say my friends also have a big influence in the person and student I am now because not only have they made the experience here more enjoyable, but it just it always kept me focused and motivated. So I'm really glad to have these people as my friends. And next I like to talk about is soccer, or football as I like to call it. And it's something that I like to do in my spare time, something that I look forward to doing, and although I'm not on an official team, on an official soccer team, but soccer has shown me that not everything can come easy, that you have to work hard at it, you have to be dedicated in order to be the very best that you can be. So with this, with my hard work and dedication, it landed me on the spot on the Deer Valley soccer team. I'll, as, I was, as happy as I was now, as I was back then, I unfortunately picked up an injury that took me out three months, no, for eight months, out of the game, and it was a huge setback, and it was really depressing for me. And my uh, my after school and my education plan. I'm, I'm, I will be attending Los Medanos College for two years, and I will transfer out to either UC Davis or UC Santa Cruz to pursue my career in uh, kinesiology. And this is my mantra. With hard work and dedication, you can improve yourself by Cristiano Ronaldo. And this quote to me, or well, this mantra to me is very important because I pretty much lived, lived this quote throughout my whole senior year because I had many doubts. I, I just wanted to improve myself um, comparing to my previous years here in Indonesia. I just wanted to be the best, like, I just wanted to be the best I could be and just wanted to show out and just shine. And I'm really glad that I was able to hear this quote from my favorite soccer player because he said that he, he was able to be the best because he was he always trained every day. He made sure that he was dedicated and he was not distracted. So I'm very happy for this club. And then and here, we are, here we are to my thesis. So hard work and dedication. This is my mantra. Over the four years at Doja Libby, I developed into the person I am today. Being a reckless and careless freshman, I soon realized I could not get by with below average grades and that I needed to put effort into my education. I had to choose whether to be a failure or to be successful. So I chose to succeed in my laying down the exhausting journey through my voyage. I endured many challenges, endless nights, overwhelming homework, and difficult group projects. I was able, I was able to overcome all challenges through my desire to be victorious. With my hard work, I developed reading, writing, speaking, and active listening skills to communicate successfully with my fellow classmates and collaborating with others in group project assignments. I became health literate and I learned to solve abstract problems both collaboratively and independently while applying my knowledge to the real world situation. <coughs> and first I would like to talk about Good Eats. And Good Eats is a ninth grade integrative project which pretty much will have the focus on between eating healthy and eating um, and eating non-healthy non foods. So in my, in my ninth grade biology class we had this experiment with two lab rats that we had. One's diet will consist of mainly junk food of candy, soda, and sugars, while the other would just have water and regular rat food. And with this, I was in charge of making a, a scale diagram to show the rats weight progression over time. And pretty much, I did not do very well in this, even though it, even though I, as new to it was, I was very scared and very timid to ask for help. I did not know what to ask, so I pretty much failed in my communicating skills, but it has now changed, as you will see, Ne um, see next. So, IES, the International Economic Summit, is a, is an as is an assignment that to prove to if, um, to better the standards of living of a of a country, mainly lower developed countries like Jordan, Syria, Yemen, and so on. The goal of this assignment was to compare the economies of all the countries around the world, and it were and we were grouped into five. And as a group, we're supposed to choose a group as um, that would be beneficial for eating, receiving, or giving for an aid, and trading, and making only making good alliances with other countries. That way we have to trade without paying any exports or deports. 
And so my country went with Jordan. And right here, as you can see, with, with also IES, we also had to um, dress um, according to the culture of, of our country. And, um, and we also had a, oh, let me go back. No, we also made a display board. It's pretty small to see here, but the display board contained facts of our country, like the agriculture, the money system, the government, and the type of, um, the type of food and homegrown metals that they, that they have. And with this, I was in charge of the English reflection paper, which was, uh, for me, it was kind of like I was timid to do it, but I, but reflecting back on ninth grade, I wanted to take on this challenge and to improve myself that I can do it. And by, by this, I wasn't just really, I wasn't really scared to ask for help at all. I asked my group members day in and day out just to, just communicating using my phone to like call and, and text them to figure out what I should what I should put into the reflection paper as you see here. And also we had a, a, a medical issue with our country because not only was it very poor, it had very, it was the water, it had a water shortage. It was, the water in Jordan was very low that way. So no one, no one in Jordan could get water easily. So what me and my group leader did, we collaborated on the idea of how to make the, the water system, the how to make more water um, come into the towns of Jordan. So what we did is brought up the idea of make, of rebuilding a better water duct system. And with this system, it was able to transport water to each of the towns that needed water, or else this health equity issue was very, was very, was very large, was very, um, was a priority in our country. Because many people would be dehydrated, not, not every family would have a, like clean, clean baths or showers, or, or even they would be overheated and die of um, heat stroke. So that's what me and my group leader collaborated on. And next, I will talk about the statistical analysis. So a statistical analysis is a algebra, is a algebra two assignment that I had to refer back to my previous projects as I did a senior, and I was supposed to collect data and information on this project. So what I did was, I went out to my community and asked how many asked how many people knew someone that was disabled that had a disability with the um, regardless of what it was. So I, I pretty much I asked forty people, and my statistical guess that twenty of them knew someone that had a disability. So which I, so my statistical guess pretty much I pretty much what I did is I just divided. 20 and 40, and, for, and the outcome was only two people knew someone in my community that that knew someone that had someone that they knew someone that had a disability. And with this, I took this new information that I found and I communicated successfully with my group members, talking about how how I could use this into my benefit in my statistical analysis essay. Pretty much, communicating was a big was a big important part in this. I had to again use my phone to talk to my fellow, my former group members to to be able to to, to, um, to be able to be able to succeed in this assignment. And I would like to talk. And next, I would like to talk about IES and I and no IES at Project Eddie. My bad. So Eddie ta Eddie stands for Envision, Design, Discover, Invent, and Execute. And Project Eddie is uh, what Project Eddie was is we're supposed to make a device make a device that was supposed to aid a person with a disability. And this, the, and this device was not supposed to help their situation, but rather make it, it, rather make it better to improve it, or else it's seen as a form of pity. And in, my, in our medical ethics class, we read the book No Pity, and it gave us an inside scoop of how people with, with disabilities don't want to be seen, don't want to be seen as different people. They want to be tr treated regularly like you and I. So that was the main part of this project. And bringing a project and bringing a device to life, which we pretty did, was a wheelchair that could raise the seat higher to the adjusted height that the person wanted to and wanted to be. So what we did is we got a car jack and we mounted it under the seat, as you can see right here. And then what this was supposed to do, as you would crank the jack, as, you, as the, jack, the car jack would expand, the seat would lift higher and higher. And until to, until uh, to the adjusted height that the person wanted it to. Now this was very, this project was very difficult for me and my group members because not only was it very, um, we had many complications. Next, as you can see, we had many bolts that would just snap and break on us, and we pretty much went through this process over and over again, pretty much not listening 
and not paying attention why it would break. So we pretty much solved this problem by using a rebar, rebar metal that's used to make bridges, which is a stronger metal that could withstand twice as much as body weight than regular, than regular boats, as you can see. Now with this, we were able to test this and it was able to be successful in our, in our project. And also with this, I was supposed to, um, I was introduced to a new, te a new type of computer programming and technology. And well, I, was I was supposed to make a 3D, um, 3D diagram, no, 3D model of this wheelchair that I was introduced in my Spanish class. And although this was a very new program to me, it was very hard to adapt to it and very to adapt to it and to learn how it. But I pretty much was helped and guided by my Spanish teacher. And as he helped me through on the days that I tried to build, um, make the 3D models, I, I successfully adapted to this new type of program and was um, efficient in making a, a, a good 3D model of the wheelchair. And, all, and this, this, um, this project was mainly based around government because we, in government class, we learned about the ADA laws and how ADA law, the ADA law is supposed to prohibit discrimination in employment and public accommodations and telecommunications. And basically what the, what an ADA, what the ADA, ADA law is, is for an example, for someone in a wheelchair is, is in a parking lot and is trying to get up to a, a convenient you know, community store and cannot get up the store up the curb because there is no ramp. Now that is an example of a building being ADA, um, not being ADA compliant. And that person who owns the store can face major char major a uh, lawsuit and, and high um, expenses of remodeling, which is, can be very bad for someone. And next, I would like to talk about the sound wave labs that I that was based in my class physics. Now, physics, um, the sound wave lab was basically grabbing a tuning fork and a microphone and basically tapping the tuning fork to get to in order to get a sound wave out of it, and it'll project right here, as you can see. Now, doing this was not difficult because all you had to do is grab the tuning fork, just tap it on your hand, put it close to the vineyard microphone that was connected to a to an interface an interface that connected to the computer and it gives us this reading right here as a sound wave. Now, again, a new technology and devices. I was very alienated to it. I didn't know how to use it, but again, I was very quickly to adapt because I had my group members to help. I had my physics teacher to, um, to help me guide through this program. And the program that I was introduced to was um, LabQuest, Lab, Lab, the LabQuest program. And it was, for me, I didn't know how to use it as I mentioned, but I was able to adapt to it. And it's very, and this is very important to me because and this is a new technology that I'm being exposed to and I need to learn and I need to be comfortable with being presented with new types of technology because later in my career, I will be presented in kinesiology, I will be presented with new types of devices that I would have to learn to adapt to and to get used to and to further my, and to further my career and job, so. I'm very thankful for the Dozier for showing me and helping me understand new types and new types of technology and learning to adapt. And the CAM project. The CAM project is is an integrator, another integrator project I did my on my sophomore year. We were basically we were assigned a country. My country was India for for the for the most part. We also had to research a medical a medical issue that was very high in this country that affected the country as a whole. So it was basically traditional healing. As you can see here, this is a witch guru with all his potions and, and um, his own home remedies versus Western medicine, the medicine we have here in the United States. And, basic, and what we had to do is pretty much do a role play, um, a, role, a role play, an act of, some, of having a patient that is from a foreign country but his, but his or her parents were not allowing the Western medicine, but wanted to go full, wanted to go full through the, the traditional healing. And we had, it was, and this was also another big thing for me because although I did very good in this pro, um, in this project, presented myself well, I did have lack of research. And although I had like I had a lot of information, but I did not research enough. And that's where this comes into my medical abuses. Medical abuses is another is a project I did in medical ethics. And basically, and what it is, is um, it's taking control of human breeding of a specific groups or ethnicity, um, um, ethnicity, gender, or um, um, physical capability. 
And my subject was no mas bebes in Spanish. I mean, in English it means no more babies. So what it was was I had to I had to research what um what was going on in L um, because in L A there was a in Los Angeles, California there was um un, an ex, um sterilized um illegal legal sterilization going on without the women that were giving birth that had nothing that they they did not knew about all because. All the, the Latino women were presented with consent forms on the verge of giving birth, and excuse me, on the verge of giving birth. When these doctors presented them with papers and flyers, just rushing them while they're in pain, they're tricking them and playing them, saying that oh, I can make the pain stop if you sign this form, which they pretty much was they tricked them completely because after they gave birth, they made them sign a, a consent form. I do not have here, unfortunately, but. There was a consent for giving them full permission to undergo the procedure of sterile, um, of being sterilized. And what what this procedure was is um, is tubule tubule ligation is a surgical procedure that uh, permanently closes the closes or blocks the fallopian tubes. That way, when the when, that way when the sperm enters the fallopian tube, it cannot reach the eggs. See, this is where the fallopian tubes are cut off and tied. And once this Procedure is done because no going the back. government was scared of the minority group growing in, in growing no, large numbers. They they were convinced that if they grew in large numbers, that more crime rate more crime rates would happen, that the, that the economy would go down and it would be overpopulated. So what they do, they try to control how many women were be ever going to be able to give birth. So once they signed these consent forms, it was pretty much done, and they can not go back from it. And all these women were devastated, obviously. And I have little, and I can relate to this because my mom, my mother, my mother came around the, the, the 1980s and I was born in 98 and luckily she wasn't, luckily this didn't happen to her because or else we, I, or else we wouldn't have any more younger, I wouldn't have young, any more younger siblings. So I was very, I was very lucky and this really touched me because this could have possibly could have happened to my mother if she were not if she were not aware of this because she had the help of my three older brothers and here we come to my final slide my revised thesis over my four years I had a major transformation from ninth grade I had gained the importance of communication while also adapting to the complex problems complex problems and solving them with critical thinking I also understand also understanding the need the need of being health literate with graduation around the corner, I can say that I, with confidence that I am truly prepared to start the next chapter of my life. So, why I used technology to solve my problem was it was mainly mounting it was was making the 3D chair because as I was make because I finished the 3D model before I made the chair, so the main problem was to how I solve this whole problem right here is while I was making while I, while we me and my group members were making this, we had to think about where exactly could we mount the car jack onto the on the strut bars that the wheels were being sustained to be pushed out. And it came to the idea where, where is it at? To put it <clears throat> exactly here in the middle, that way you could get a good leverage, and, and that and that way it would be wobbly when the person was able to sit down on the chair. And well, uh, obviously, you know, seeing the uh, Spanish in your presentation and, yeah. and some of the examples, um, a little bit about your culture. Um, in, in, throughout your uh, studies here at Dojo Living with the, the health areas, how has cultural sensitivity been a play in, in any of your projects or your work that you've done uh, uh, here? Well, as I mentioned, in good ER and medical, uh, medical abuses, my co uh, since my family, the culture being Latino and Hispanic, and while this was going around, around like the 1980s and 90s, I was very, it, very, it just appealed to me very emotionally because this could have happened to my mother if she would came to the United States and around those times. and. I probably wouldn't be be here today if that would have occurred, but that affected me emotionally because 
I, as I see these Latina women, I imagine it. What if that would happen to me and to my mother? That would affect me. Well, that that affected me greatly because not 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 being the child of these women, I could I could feel and understand like the pain that we're going through. Can you explain a time when you um, actually went out into the community or did something for the community um, to show that you were socially responsible? So. As I'm um, back in my statistical analysis, I went out into my neighborhood and I asked various people, well, again, I asked various people if they knew someone with a disability and if they, were to, if they were comfortable with me asking questions and all that. So the way how I kind of wrapped this all up, I just mainly just asked around my neighborhood and my, my local community. I know, uh, as you are going to work in the future and uh, making the transition in between a uh, two-year school and a four-year skill, yeah. four-year school, and then they're working on your uh, uh, career after, what uh, specific abilities or skills have you learned here in four years that would help you maintain that focus and not get lost in the crowd? Well, my abilities that I've taken from here at Dojo is that's going to help me a lot in my in my further studies is. Communicating because communicating is something huge in college because they're also in college is nothing compared to high school. There's way way more bigger assignments and everyone's not there just for themselves. Everyone around there helps each other. They try to, because along the way in college you will meet new people and everyone will try to help you out and that way communicating for me is very big in that aspect because I would need I feel as I said as I've said before I'm scared I'm very scared of asking questions for help but. I pretty much got over that, and I will use that further in my education, just communicating, being an effective communicator. Yeah, I just have one more question. What do you consider to be your greatest success here at Dojo Liberty? My greatest success? I'd say 